Hello to everyone. Well, I survived the move, didn't I? Barely. So I have leftover jasmine tea. I usually like to drink iced tea out of a tumbler. Uh, if I could find one, that would be great, but I can't find one. I had tons of stuff. I had food and I had eBay inventory. And so you might be thinking, well, yes, yeah, so. All right, I want to show you. Here is one of the lovely coats I'm selling. What I do is we have a thrift store. And on a certain day, the inventory is $1. And this is really nice. Uh, if you want to sell women's uh, plus size clothes, you will have no competition. So I search for them. And so what I try to do is I try to find this kind of stuff, you know, at times in thrift stores like this uh, summer when it was blazing hot, I bought this stuff dirt cheap. Okay, this is actually a motorcycle um, jacket. And this is actually my jacket. And uh, first of all, of all the worst injuries, I love this jacket. Of all the worst injuries you can ever, ever get is on a motorcycle. But that doesn't mean the jackets aren't wonderful. I love this jacket. I bought it for a dollar. I will, well, I shouldn't say I will never sell it, but I, when I'm done with it, I'll sell it. And it's super warm, too. So, as you can imagine, this stuff is heavy. And this is something that I try to find is these tan and and um, and uh, caramel colored coats, and also black black leather coats. This was one of the big hatreds uh, for the last move. Not this last one. That woman over there is such a good manager. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's like day and night. But I had a trunk full of coats that I couldn't take with me. I was so mad. This time, I couldn't take stuff with me because I couldn't. And we'll get into couldn't is different than prevented. Okay, so uh, one of the things, if you guys can get a silver coin or two each month, this is the first man on the moon, commemorative. I love this. And it is a wonder. I try to get all my jewelry and all my eBay inventory and all my uh, clothes. And I had this on yesterday, and it wasn't a very good demonstration. But this is a vintage watch. And uh, it's a little bit beat up. But it's a, a Milan watch or something. But it's very similar to a Chanel watch or a Reverso. So I will never sell this because, first of all, I don't have to have really expensive things. I like nice things. Okay, this is a silver chain. If you can find these, they're easier to sell at a uh, flea market. Because what are you supposed to do if you can't afford a 925? And then I love these little silver, um, I mean, gold tone uh, women's watches. Because they're like little bracelets and I have a whole bunch of them. And then there's pins. I have lots of them. And you might go, who wants, only old ladies want that kind of stuff. Well, it turns out old ladies or older people buy 39% of the stuff. Now, I happen to love these. This is a cheetah and this is a tiger. I doubt I will sell them, but if I was broke, how about this pin for Christmas? I love this pin. It's, somebody might buy it. If not, well, maybe next year. And then this is just a nice gold tone. Uh, this is the kind of stuff I sell. Uh, this is like a brand new watch. I think it's Riviera. If I get a battery, I would sell it for 20 bucks. And the other thing, if you ever want to try this, is, is uh, pearl stuff. Women are always 
going to be wanting that kind of stuff. So that's what I was doing. And uh, I mean, it was, it was something else. So that's what I was doing, you guys. But I voted, by God, in California for Trump. Okay, so now, whether Trump wins, whether Biden wins, no matter what happens, we have to ensure that we're having a really, really good life. That's our job. We have voted, and there's nothing we can do really at this point. Now, I want to show you my little diagram. Some of you probably don't like them, but they're really for myself. This is me. Okay, the past, the move, the election, the move, that's the past. This is me today. See the sun, the bright sunny sh uh, sun over my dwelling. And this is the future, and I have some angels up here. And this is a healing leaf. So um, they say once the seniors realize how to do the uh, online shopping, as of now, the, about 39% uh, are the purchasers of online stuff. So if you have an online business, that can really uh, help you. Okay, now, all right, I want to show you something. Today I had to go to Walmart and I had to buy uh, fingernail clippers because in this massive mess, I couldn't find mine. And now the 99 cent stores out here don't have any. So I had to buy some for like $5.50, you know, fingernail clippers. So if you can still get them for a dollar, get them. So remember those delicious cookies that I bought? Well, guess what? I bought uh, some on sale half price at Walmart. So instead of $10, they were $5. And so, you know, the diet gurus, the first bite is the only bite that tastes good. No, I ate five of them and every one of them tasted good. So these were $5. So by getting this for half price, I went on the half price bin and I got these for half price. And I got these um, muffins for half price. So I basically got these free by shopping the markdown bin. So that is enough treats for me for a month. So I did a video, videos a while back on the uh, continental breakfast. And so when I was at the other apartment and I was so busy, I had bagels with cream cheese, and I thought, I'm going to get some bagels and some muffins, and you know, you can make a boiled egg. And then I got bread, 50% off, so I will just stick that in the freezer. And then I got this thing for 50 cents marked down, and there's two baby, baby, uh, Diapers. I don't know how much diapers cost, but I got two diapers and some wipes. So those could come in handy. You know, you go, oh, I have plenty of diapers. Yeah, and then you don't have any diapers. And then I got this bag for 50 cents. So I thought that was really good because I'm still buying stuff for the baby for the rest of her life. It's a girl. Very excited. My son is a boy. I have one son and there's no daughters, which is so exciting that one's coming. So, okay, so now, 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 now. Okay, so we're saying to ourselves, okay, whoever wins, let me show you how happy my plants are. Here is my poinsettia, yes, from last Christmas. And here is my climbing aloe vera. I bought it, it was a little bigger than these little ones. And uh, I have them in the window right now. I kind of like them there. I don't know if I'm gonna keep them there, but those are my plants. They seem to like it here. Are they showing? I will let them stay in the video. Say hi to all the followers. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, so now what we're saying to ourselves, okay, in our history, sometimes the Democrats won the presidency and sometimes the Republicans won the presidency. I have done everything I can. I have voted. So now, no matter what happens, 
I have to make sure I have a good life. Um, that was my whole life, you know. Hard times will come, but um, I was telling my son, when they do come, you are forever changed. So we will get into that, this move, and what I have come out on the other side. So even if the worst comes, and I have told you guys many times, if I am still standing in the rubble, I will pray, God, help! Okay, so, so maybe you're saying, well, I don't really have any faith. Okay, in uh, Beirut, there was a bombing and a fertilizer plant blew up, blew up. A huge explosion, but the Sayed Deb, Sayed Deb, was a Lebanese pastor, and he said, he said he felt an inexplicable prompting to close the refugee center an hour before the um, explosion, and it was lunchtime where all the people um, came for lunch, and he said, "Go home, go home, leave, leave, leave now." Otherwise, God protected them. I think about 34 refugees were saved. And so, is, is this only for the people of Beirut? No, it's God is all over the world. Okay, well, maybe you're saying, my situation is too hard. You don't understand. This is too hard. This is too hopeless. I am, nothing good can come out of this. I'm too injured and I'm too sick. But throughout time, hopeless situations, God is the same. The Bible says, I am the Lord God, I change not. Okay, sometimes it is not to our liking, but we have to say to ourselves, why would God help the other guy and abandon me? That wouldn't make any sense. Okay, so... Recently, I learned this prayer, and I wish I had known it all my life, and it was, God, can you send some of those angels to help me? Or, God, can you please um, send me a healing leaf? Because one of the pastors met mentioned that deathly ill people, the angels would actually bring a few leaves off the tree of life and administer them to them. And, and they would recover. So what I start doing is I personally have seen angels before, which I know most of you are probably going, you're delusional. That, that's what I thought. I've seen a good one, and I've seen, I've seen some good ones, and I've seen one that I, I think wasn't a good one. But they all look kind of like the same. So when I, I was like even the least little bit sick. I wish I had known this last year when I was sick. I just pretend I'm eating a healing leaf. And I pretend, because I have no idea what one looks like, I just pretend it's like a basil leaf and I pretend I'm eating it. And then I receive the healing by faith. So I say, when I'm doing my uh, pretending, God... Thank you for the healing leaf. I accept my healing in the name of Jesus. So, that's that. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about this move I just went through. Okay, what happened was my son bought a house and the escrow went straight through. And out here in California, there's no houses available. La, la, la. Well, one was available. And so it was decided I would move here and a baby is coming. So we had like 20 days. And so I couldn't move here until my son's pregnant wife and my son left here. And this happened during their busy time. So it was extremely stressful. And then um, the baby was coming and it's like, wow, we can't overdo it because, you know, the baby is coming. But anyway, so I had like four or five days for me to move my massive amount of junk over here. And so when I first started it, 
I had the sensation that I was trying to uh, move Mount Everest, little me and Mount Everest. And so I prayed, God, you've got to help me. I've got to get out of here. Uh, because I figured they would forgive me if the place wasn't too awful. It was pretty bad. But um, I asked God, just somehow work it out fair somehow. And I think he did. And so the first night, I decided the most important thing I own is my, my food. Because none of us really knows what might happen. I think personally everything is going to be okay, but you never know, and I don't want to be caught without food. So I, it was decided that I would move my food first before I moved anything else in my house. If I left everything else, all my eBay inventory, every possession I owned, I decided the most important thing was my food. And when I started trying to um, pack this stuff up, it was so heavy and it was so messy. You saw, I was such a wreck trying to move it the first night. So the second day, it was still, I just thought, I cannot do this. And I just kept praying and praying and praying. And on the third day, it wasn't flowing and I had a vote. I, I said, I am going to vote if it's the last thing I did. And so I prayed, God help me. And out here in California, which I should have known because it was Demo more Democrats, it went without a hitch. And I was able to vote. I pulled up, and here was a place, and there was a parking place right across the street. And I walked in, and there was nobody, nobody there. And I voted. And then I ran back home, and I started packing as soon as fast as I could. And this went on until yesterday and you guys know it was the day before yesterday well I forget anyway and I got over here and you saw my condition I'm still in bad shape but I am alive and my poor son was worse because he moved two houses plus there was a lot of stuff that had to be done it was really a nightmare so I was moving this food, and uh, what I learned, just in case any of you ever had this experience, we could have had the movers. We had movers because my furniture was so heavy. We could have had the movers move the um, food, or if I had moved the food before the actual move of the house, that really helped me, but I didn't know that, so I learned that. So if any of you have food storage and you really have to move, you know, you never know. Just like me, as of, like, last month, I didn't really know I was moving. So um, the, the point of this is, is that when you go through hard stuff, you are forever changed. So now, about the coronavirus. It's been a weird year, and it's been a hard year, and it hasn't been pleasant. But the Bible tells us we are going to face plagues. And now I think that all of us are better equipped to um, face a plague. Because basically... It was a plague. Basically, it was bioterrorism, really. So, from now on, the rest of our lives, next to our food, right next to it, are masks, gloves, and bleach. Okay, now, I also learned recently, when you are stockpiling food, stockpile potatoes, pasta, and rice. Make sure you have that. So, I made some uh, potato soup. That was really good. And I have pasta and rice, so tonight I'm making a pasta meal. So if you can, because you're going to be able to make so many cheap meals out of that. I just, I wasn't uh, really one for um, eating pasta and rice. Not really. I eat uh, potatoes and vegetables and meat. But these um, potatoes, not like what I made, like the stuffed potatoes or the potato soup, like meat, potatoes, and a vegetable. But in some kind of food shortage, uh, that might run out. You know, your bag of potatoes might run out. So if you have packages of pasta and rice and potatoes, that's really going to help you. And the other thing that seems to be coming possible shortages would be meat 
cheese, oil and butter. So I stockpiled some butter and I'll be putting more butter in my freezer. And it makes sense that that might inflate because it's an animal product. And milk, evaporated milk is probably the best. And another thing I learned from this hellacious move that has forever changed me is those uh, vacuum packed bags are the best. No more open bags, um, leaking crap. Just get the stuff sealed up the way you buy it, cans, so nothing happens to you. Uh, it, I have a funny story, you know, I'm packing my food and it's getting down to the wire. My son's going, Mom, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So I had this big can of corn. I said, here, take this. He took it and he threw it in the house. He goes, Mom, you have enough food. <laughs> that cracked me up. And another thing is stress. How do you manage stress? One day at a time is the only way you can... You can't manage the, la the stress from yesterday, which was stressful. And there's nothing we can do about the future, but if we manage the stress... Um, I read this book, you know, I was doing the um, audio books, and it was... Um, I forget the name of the book. I'll tell you when I remember it. But what it said is just do things in a certain way. Don't rush. Just do it in a certain way. Do it right, and then it's over. So when you're managing your stress, you're just doing what you can. You're doing it right, and, you know, it's going to be managed much better. The art of being rich, I think. Okay, so now when I was in, I was trying to move this stuff... Uh, it was day two, and I thought, I cannot do this, and, and I didn't do it good. Uh, when I used to um, take classes, I had this skill, and I infected other people, I'm sorry to say, with it. And so what I, because, you know, I worked two and three jobs and went to school. So what I did is I couldn't do a good job, I did a bad job. <laughs> and so that was like the move. I got the move done. My garage and the house is... A mess. So I did a bad job. I did the best I I said, God, I'm gonna do the best I can and can you please help me make it good enough? And that's what I did. So now uh, on the second day when I was just like so overwhelmed, um, I learned something a long time ago and it was he who sings, tw he who sings prays twice. And at various times in my life when things were very bad, I would sing a bit. And you've heard me, it's really bad. Because I knew I needed to uh, pray twice. But this time, I happened to think, why don't you just go online and get some singing people? Because really, I was too beat up to actually sing. And I found two good videos, and I posted them on my uh, Twitter for you guys. And it was um, angels singing cut on tape during church choir practice. Okay, so now, what were these angels singing? Well, they were singing hallelujah. That's why, like, in one of my videos, I said something hallelujah, because all day long I was listening to the song. And it relaxes your mind so you can function. And so the words were hallelujah. Breathe it all across the land. Everybody's singing at the Lord's command. All the saints and the angels are in heaven. Now the angels are in heaven, you guys. Waiting to hear the news of Jesus and his children as they're coming through. So the praises were the children, the people, and the angels are in heaven they love to see what we're going to do, first of all. Sometimes the situations are so um, hellacious, all we can do, and I, I have one I want to talk to you in a minute, all we can do is say, God, I don't know what this good or this can possibly come out of this, but I am just going to exercise faith that you uh, know what is the best thing for me and please help send some of those angels to help so then the second video that I listened to because I, a lot of times I have heard the faith of a child will do the healing 
So uh, I know my son, when he was a little boy, was the personification of this. I sent him to private school. I left, I, I spent my last dollar, and many times I said it was worth every single penny. So there's this little seven-year-old boy singing Because He Lives, the Blood, the Br Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Okay, the reason I went to that one, because years ago I watched uh, videos, and it was the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir has a church, and they have an outreach, and they go and they get the most pitiful people, you know, drug addicts, and then the next thing you know, uh, they're, they're singing solos. But this was their child, uh, one of their children. And he was a, just the cutest thing ever, but there was a strong anointing on the music. And I knew it because when I was listening to it, it calmed me down to the point I could function. And you guys, if you're Christians, all know this song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because... He lives, all the fear is gone. He lives, I know, he holds my future, and life is worth living just because he lives. And and it, it goes on for several minutes, and it's very calming. So if you're sick, if you're like in a terrible situation, and you have the internet, uh, check that out. God sent his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. So now, in the end times, they say what we're going to see is false prophets. Okay, what these uh, false prophets do is they go gloom, doom, you're screwed. Uh, these are God's judgments, you will be killed. Well, what about the people in Beirut? They weren't killed. Okay, now, if you have bad problems, look for one of these churches, like the uh, Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir Church. In El Cajon, on the, on the corner of Hamishaw and Washington, they have a Baptist church, and, and they also distribute food there. And so, uh, I was going to that church, and I would go to their prayer services, and, and so... They would give us these long lists, two, three pages of people to pray for. And they said, well, just put your hand on and pray. And I said, no, I am going to pray for every single person on the, the list, if it, it, no matter how exhausted I am. And so as we would go through the, the list, it would be sick people, prisoners, mentally ill, uh, so-and-so is getting a divorce, uh, anything and everything, every th terrible stuff. And, and so, you know, I would pray, I would pray, needs a job, that kind of stuff. So also in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they have a community center. So if you need help, if you have um, terrible problems, then try to find one of these uh, places because that is what they're all about. Okay, so now. I want to get all this stuff in. Okay, so now the Adventist in El Cajon, I, I assume every Adventist church, they have a food place two, um, two days a week. And uh, they also have a community outreach where they go into the community and try to find people that need help. So if you are in some kind of situation, you call 211. I called them, and they sent me to the pantry and the food uh, bank. And, um, or if you're facing homeless, or if you don't have, if you need WIC, or if your utilities are going to be paid off. One of my customers had hepatitis C, no, B, and she was so deathly sick, and she called them, and she didn't want to go to the hospital. So the volunteer police checked on her every few hours to make sure, you know, if she needed a 911. Welfare. You know, this is not the time for pridefulness if you need stuff. Food banks, pantries, and churches. So Jesus 
the the whole message of Jesus, if you read the, you can listen to the uh, books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John on the audio books. I listen to a lot of them. And so his entire, his entire focus was to feed the poor, uh, heal the sick, and cast out demons. So if that is what he was doing when he was here, and you're sick, you say, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he heal me? I need healing and pray. And another thing is God has not given us the spirit of fear. That is not God. Okay, now. So, you know, you have the good angels and you have the bad angels. Okay, first of all, the angels that I saw were huge, like eight feet tall, including the bad one. But he was just as, just like a good angel, but he just had that look to him. And I hope I never, ever meet one. I just saw one. I was walking uh, by uh, Parkway Plaza when I saw it. And they're, they're white, they're like a ghost, but they're an angel. Okay, now. So now we want to prepare now. Okay, there's pretty much nothing we can do about the future, but if we re prepare little by little, like now I have all my snacks pretty much for the month. And the other day, this was funny to me, I go, wow, I have no food. Yeah, I have food. But I couldn't cook easily. So if you guys have never seen these, these are two for two dollars from Walgreens, and I found them to be good. Okay, so well now secure shelter. Uh, it doesn't have to be the shelter of your dreams. Okay, now I was extremely lucky with this shelter. I don't ever have to worry about being evicted now. Because now I'm I'm renting from my son's friend, and this place is really really nice. So that just happened. I was just you could say lucky. Lucky. Stockpile food. If you don't have money, go to the food pantries. Get welfare and uh, EBT. Um, get WIC for your kids. Get the food from the schools for your kids. If you hear about it and you don't have any money, get the food now. Okay, so now America has been described as a shining city on a hill because we reflect the love of Christ. We help other countries when they have horrible problems. Our firemen and policemen are the personification of, of you know, helpfulness. And so the first, well, not the first one, this has been a, an American concept, but Reagan and then also Romney. So, you know, America, you know, you're going to get judgments and, you know, God is going to, no, the judgments are for evil doers, the people working evil against the country. And if you need help, why wouldn't God help you? Say that to yourself. Well, you know, I'm in a really hope, hopeless situation. Well, why wouldn't he help you? He's helped a lot of other people. Now about my ex-husband. You know, when you hear about these um, these men and women selling, say, serving the country. Okay, this is my ex-husband. Look at this. This was like a few days after uh, graduation. Uh, you know, for graduation, they would go to Disneyland. Well, then my ex-husband, who was actually a kid, he wouldn't have even been um, a freshman in college, went straight to Vietnam, and it was very, very scary. And so my ex-husband was a paratrooper, and what that means is they would parachute out of a jet into a war zone and that was scary enough as it was and it's still the same with our paratroopers i called my son in and i go get in here watch this it's exactly the same things have not changed one bit the paratroopers are still doing it okay so then he got home and life was never easy 
the whole time, you know, we were married, it was never easy. We went, it was those things like, you're forever changed after everything. So what happened was, one of the first bad things that happened after our divorce, my ex-husband's father had a stroke, a bad stroke, and he was paralyzed. He was my ex-husband's uh, stepfather. He was a big person, and my husband was not too big, about 5'7 or 2'8. Prior to that, he had a broken neck, and part of his job was to lift these um, heavy um, piles of paper to do printing. He was a lithographer. In fact, the house was bought from uh, a printer. And so lifting this paper was impossible. And now he's got to lift his father out of bed and do the patient care. And if anybody has ever done patient care on um, people with strokes, you know how bad it is, but having a broken neck was even worse and he did it for 15 years. And that goes back to the army, one boot in front of the other, but it was really, really bad and eventually it did kill him. But he took care of his family. Now I took care of my son, myself, because my husband was taking care of his family. And so then it went and it was bad, bad, bad. And it finally killed him. He did the parents. I buried him next. We buried him next to his mother and his father. And the fact that we had money to bury him. I can remember you guys going to work with a hole in the toe of my shoe. Yes. So then it was bad at the funeral. You know, we were bearing up okay because all we knew was bad. My ex-husband's girlfriend, you know, we were going to throw a flower on his casket, came running, and I thought she was going to fall into the, the grave. And I said to my son, she's not going to last long, and she didn't. She died recently. And so life was hard, that hardcore. That's why people tell me, you're so lucky. I go, well... You know, call it what you will. But there were times, you know, I would just pray so hard. So, okay. So, that happened. But God took care of us all those years. Starting way back from when my husband graduated from high school. Went to grad night. Flew to Fort Bragg. And, you know, that's the right. So, okay, so now I want to mention something. Another thing is the ministry of Jesus was to cast the, to set the captives free. So on the election ballot, and I don't know if it went through, we had this initiative, should felons be able to vote? If you have served your time, that's your punishment, so you might be thinking, well, yeah, well, they're felons. They don't deserve to vote. Okay, California was on fire, these massive fires. And Governor Newsom signed a bill releasing the felons to fight the fires. And I thought of all the scary damn stuff because they're not trained as firemen. And, they were, and these fires, if you don't live here, you cannot imagine, and I had a dream, and it was a man praying, and I just think about all those men, their moms must have been terrified too, and so um, I voted yes, they should. After you have served your time, anyway, I just, and they said, why do you want to do it, and they said, well, we're from California, we're, we're Americans, so, you know, never judge the other guy. I, I just couldn't believe that, and our government, governor is terrific. I just think about those people incarcerated, willing to go fight those fires. And a lot of people were, the smoke inhalation itself is, is deadly. Now. Biden, last I checked, had 264 electoral votes. He needs seven votes. Trump has 214 electoral votes and needs 56. 
Pennsylvania provides 20. Arizona, I couldn't find it, but it's not many. But the thing about uh, before, before in the past, you guys, it's come down to uh, one state. Uh, Texas, 88. Um, it's a strong possibility if, if he hasn't already, Trump will win Texas. Uh, for one thing, tech, uh, President Trump is very strong with the Latinas. Florida, 29. I don't know if he won Florida last time, but he has a lot of businesses in Florida and a lot of Latinos. Georgia and Wisconsin. So these uh, six uh, states will probably decide the election. So that's what I wanted to say to you guys. I changed my channel up like you were in my kitchen, such that it is. This is actually a really nice kitchen, you guys. Hear the fish? Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.